Welcome back again to Auto Transport Intel. And thanks for joining me on another chilly Tuesday night. Man, it is. It's freaking cold out there. And um, you don't need me to, you know, to tell you that. Uh, but, I mean, you know, uh, I've been outside just periodically. And I can't imagine working in these conditions and loading. What's up, Dave? Hey, welcome to the show, Dave. Yeah, we got to, uh, we should talk sometime. I've seen your videos, man. I like what you're doing. And uh, I even saw there was a Facebook post about um, maybe you got uh, new t-shirts or something. So, really curious about that. Hey, what's up, Viper Transport? Happy New Year. And Happy New Year to everybody. Um, it is cool to go into the new year. I got some uh, leftover New Year's Eve uh, garb hanging around my set here, my, uh, my trustworthy desk, and, um, yeah, today was kind of clearing out the cobwebs, I was kind of looking at the timeline, you know, 48 hours ago, I was getting into full party mode, and then 36 hours ago, I was dead to the world, and then 24 hours ago, I was kind of in the after party of the party, you know, watching football, hanging out, went to the movie theater, and then 12 hours ago, clearing out cobwebs, and then now here I am. So, um, this uh, actually, this show helps me kind of get back in the swing of things. That and dispatching. So, I was, you know, looking for cars today. And, um, hey, what's up, Self Made? Happy New Year. Welcome back to the show. And, yeah, me too. I'm trying to help the industry too. We're on the same page. And that's, I think that's, um, that's one of the good things I think happening right now. Actually, we're going to, this is cool. I got, I got Ziggy on tonight as a guest in about 45 minutes. Um, hopefully, hopefully you guys stick around, you know, it seems like people watch the show for a little while, which is cool. Um, I think of this show as kind of like a late night show. Um, you know, like when a late night show starts and for about the first several years, it's kind of a, well, maybe, hmm, okay, let's see what happens kind of thing. And I, I think that's where this show is right now. And it's kind of, it's actually kind of fun. It gives me that freedom. Um, but, uh, yeah, Ziggy from IATA, that's I-A-T-A, -A, uh, new alliance for the car hauling community. We're going to talk to him tonight in about 45 minutes. That's so really cool. So, yeah, Happy New Year, car hauling community, um, and you can see it on Facebook. I mean, there's there are factions of car haulers that are in touch, um, new car haulers coming in regularly, and um, what I did, you know, you may already know this, but go ahead and talk about some of the things that I try to do for the car hauling community. Besides the show, I mean, the show is is partial entertainment, partial information. Um, but I did write the auto transport business startup blog. I posted that a couple months ago, um, from my years of dispatch experience and talking to, um, owner operator, car haulers, put this together, 20 steps, how to become a car hauler. This is free information and just, you know, go in here and click on it and there's links and to FMCSA pages. And I mean, you know from step one and then hopefully you join the community and be a positive influence on the community because we all need that so it is pretty cool um seeing the community come together this is uh this is iata that i was talking about the iata um the mission is to bring together auto transporters to share experience expertise and best practices along with the ability to enjoy benefits of group purchasing power. So that's actually, I like that one of the one of the main purposes of this organization is to help car haulers get discounts in ways that, you know, um, you've got your AAA and you can show that when you're getting a hotel or other. I think that, you know, this should have a positive influence on, on several factors. So Ziggy's gonna tell us about that. Um, and even like in, uh, if you go to the truckersreport.com, the car hauling thread, iota.biz, there's a thread right there. And he's got some, you know, people are, you know, giving him proper, you know, acknowledgement of, uh, of 
you know, some of the really positive things that are going to happen. We're also going to hear the other side of it. Ziggy is uh, fascinating to talk to, so I'm really looking forward to that. And I hope that I hope that throughout the year, I plan on going live at 8 o'clock for 52 weeks this year, and I hope that each show I can have um, interviews that are informative and, I don't know, I hope it helps, you know? Uh, let's see, yeah, Happy New Year, Stan, what's up, man? From Car Scipio. If you don't know Car Scipio, then you are missing out. Because, and I've talked to several people that did not know this about Car Scipio, is that Car Scipio also has a load board. A small but growing free load board. Just go ahead and sign up. It's free to sign up. And you can get, now those are carrier plans if you want the TMS. But you can sign up for free and be um, notified of load notifications. And Stan is happy to tell you more about that, so go ahead and text him, chat with him, email him, call him. Um, and Stan, go ahead and put up the best way to contact you. Looks like there's some information there, too. So, uh, PC, yeah, I'm a PC user. I'm a PC user. What? Where is the info at? Which, which information, self-made? Um, if you... If you, if you tell me what information, because I just blew through a few pieces of information there. So, chat uh, what information you're looking for, and I will try and point you to it. Uh, have you read the article about PC on FMCSA? Big things coming. No, I have not. So, share that link. Let's go ahead. What, PC? What, PC as in computer? PC? No, nah, that can't be right. PC on FMCSA. Um, clearly I don't know what we're talking about. So, yeah, what is the article? Hey, Philip. All right, thanks for participating. The info about how to get started. Per oh, personal conveyance. Oh, yeah. You know, you're right. I do know that they're working on a better definition of personal conveyance. I think uh, that's just the beginning of because uh, there seems to be a lot of questions. Here's the problem. I'm not a driver. So as a driver using an ELD, you're going to see uh, the details of some of the issues that they're talking about with personal conveyance. So I actually don't know. And you know what? If there's, a, uh, if there's one of you guys out there that wants to talk more about, maybe Hotshot Dave, maybe you can come on the show next week and uh, talk about that. I don't know. Let me know if you're interested. Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. And, I mean, I want to talk to folks in the community that can provide pieces of information that I just can't. Um, in fact, as a dispatcher, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this show. Because I know if I was a driver, I probably wouldn't have time. You know, I couldn't predict I'd always be home on a Tuesday night to do the show and also to edit videos, I mean, I know that it, it's got to be harder, it's more time consuming because you're out on the road. And um, so I want to help in any way I can spread the information that I actually don't know. So why not? Uh, let's see here. We talked about that. I am searching a route right now, and I'm actually sorry. Um, the last couple shows, I haven't done much route searching and I've had uh, some requests to search a route. So if you have a route you want me to search, um, you know, I'll try and search your route tonight. I'm sorry, I've, I've been kind of bad on that. I've been talking and going on. Uh, we can do that, sir, and I will cover it on a video. Cool. All right, well, send me an email. Make your video. That's actually a great idea because I can't make that video. I'm not qualified, man. So, um, and I'd be happy to promote it, and we can collaborate. I mean, this is... Uh, you know, I'm an open, this is an open forum, so um, I'm just, I happen to be the one on camera, but that's one of the other reasons I'm trying to do the phone interviews, so I can bring people into the show. So, let's check Facebook news. Um, by the way, before we do, check out this clip. Have you seen this? This is some crazy stuff, man. This is Michigan. I think this is Michigan. This happened today, I think. What's my phone doing? They all stuck. Look at that. This is freaking bonkers. Like all these vehicles. Oh, man. 
is absolutely crazy i saw a couple other videos um with you know different versions of uh um different angles and stuff but uh oh man i mean that is just oh yeah so here's the map um it's up there right i-90 what's that indiana michigan that is crazy let's see so if we can zoom in there that was yeah Somewhere between Elkhart, oh, and they actually, uh, yeah, I went to the news article and then I posted it on um, on my Facebook page for Auto Transport Intel, and they, they named the exit. It was like 49 or 50, so, I mean, that's just crazy. Hey, what's up, Rithy Mac? Welcome back. And Janine? All right, what's with all that white stuff? Oh, the well, there was white border, you talk about the snow, come on. <laughs> Come on, Janine. Because uh, you, you're in California, right? Shoot, man. They have the opposite there. Now, hey, just side question. Are the fires still happening um, out in Ventura County? I haven't heard. And, you know, I was watching kind of older past news cycle. It's actually what this is. Um, about the hurricanes and the fires and, you know, it was lots of craziness, right? And, it, I mean, here we already are, you know, we're talking about the blizzard and snow and roads, but, I mean, it's like the folks just a few months ago with total disaster situations, I mean, it's already in the past, in our minds, and, like, I don't know. It just, for a moment, I just I sat and watched and was thinking, you know, there's so many folks that are in rough situations still, right? So that's, I don't know. You know, the new year, maybe that's what New Year's for, so you can try to turn over the mulch of memories and life. I don't know, man. Happy New Year. <laughs> Houston, okay. Oh, you're in Houston? Huh. I don't know why I was thinking California. I talked to somebody in California. It's hard to keep track of where people are at. In fact, I was watching um, Party Hard to Trucker. He was live about, uh, he went live about an hour ago. He might still be live. I'm not sure. And um, he's in here somewhere in my subscriptions. And uh, I actually asked him if the rates and freight went up for ELDs. He said yes. He said a lot of the bigger companies in freight are now paying higher rates because of the ELD because he's assuming they got like bank um, maybe I haven't seen anything you know there's no trickle down to central dispatch I haven't seen anything ELD positive rate wise so nope there's still still thousands out of their homes here in Florida yeah I mean oh my gosh man <sighs> Puerto Rico forget about it man that is hardcore so now what's it like i i don't know maybe the weather isn't as freezing i i didn't look because i'm so self-absorbed but geez i don't know it's really crazy when you look at what you know the victims in the fall what they're going through now i don't know makes that makes that car pile up not seem so bad but that car pile up's gnarly and can you imagine like what do you do if you see that coming and you can't slow down? You start. I saw a video inside of a guy's truck, and his truck kept getting hit by other cars. And then he might see somebody like maybe open their door. He's like, "Get back in your car!" It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Um, let's go to the Facebook news. Okay. So let's see here. 
Standard news, word is the port of Brunswick is closed tomorrow due to weather, winter conditions. I imagine all kinds of places are closed. Um, and if they're not, if some aren't, they should be. I mean, the even the ice in Texas was worse than I, I think I thought it would be. On the other hand, our first grandchild was born today. So life goes on and good things happen everywhere. Just not in the news. That's, that's a great point. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, that's right, man. Circle of life, right? Lion King. Um, no chains, no straps, wheels about to go any minute, sitting on a 45. Have you seen this? That is crazy. I mean, I guess I've seen, I've seen trailers that look like that. It's amazing. But what is he doing? He should get in a car hauling. Probably is a car hauler. No. Okay. So, um, this is pretty cool. I know it's kind of kind of out of the ordinary, but this guy's saying that these uh, Nike Janowski Maxes are good shoes for the, you know, keeping his feet dry. And, you know, because you think, right? You only have to be outside a few minutes and you're thinking, man, I wish I had better boots. I wish I had better gloves. I wish I had a better jacket. So that's interesting. Maybe that'll help somebody out. All right. Now I like to, I like to say, you know, people say, well, what do you do? All right. Well, this happens a lot, especially Christmas parties, New Year's Eve. So what do you do? Well, sometimes when meeting new people, the conversation turns to, and what do you do for a living? Up until about a year ago, I would always reply my standard, oh, I deliver new cars from the factory to the dealer. And I leave it at that. I try to be careful not to use the words truck driver in my description. Yeah, I don't say dispatcher all the time either. Past practice has shown me to do so would have me sitting there listening to hundreds of not very funny, fat, half-educated, big belt buckled JB jokes. Then one day, after being introduced to a self-proclaimed very important button pusher, I answered like this. Using 25 levers to move 50 cylinders to build 11 decks, I take up to $400,000 worth of new cars that would be over 200 feet long lined up end to end and place them in a 75 foot long, 13 and a half foot box high with four inches clearance top and bottom side to side that will ride like that for 500 miles damage free. I do this rain or shine, day or night, hot or cold. I'm the biggest, slowest thing on the road. Whatever the obstacle, will be it low bridges or tree limbs, traffic jams, breakdowns or road conditions, I'm up to the challenge, arriving on time, safe and sound at my destination. I often face next to impossible unloading situations that include working out in a busy street where motorists give me the same respect as they give to a snake trying to cross. As numbers go, there are not many like me. As people go, there are not many that can do what I do. I am a car hauler. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Hey, what's up, the one and only? How are you doing? And Happy New Year. And um, go ahead and hit that like button. No, I'm just kidding. Come on. Come on, Jay. We get carried away. All right, well, we're going to talk to IATA, IATA. We're going to talk to Ziggy in 25 minutes. I try and schedule that interview at about a quarter till. I know it seems like a ways away, but I'm already, dang, I'm already 20 minutes in this show. That is crazy. Man, uh, about to go back out on the road for the first of the year. What ELD should I go with? Which one can you edit and it not show that you edit? Thanks. I actually want to know the answer to that. Of course, I want to know the answer. We all want to know the answer to that. So what I did was, uh, if you go to ELDRatings.com, you know, I talk about this page. I like it. I recommend it. Um, ELD reviews. You can see money, and this sh this this page, this show, this sh this stuff gets updated. It seems like I see data change, which is cool. So, oh, Maven ELD, I haven't even heard of that one before. So, uh, these guys seem to be on top of it for whatever reason. So, I clicked on expert advice, and there's a phone number. Now, I just left these guys a phone message about an hour ago. Um, you know, I didn't expect to reach them, but it looks like you can email them, call them. If anybody talks to them, you know, let me know, um, and I'll do the same. I hope to talk to them before the next show. I'd like to have them on the show. I don't know who they are or what they do, but I think that uh, this could benefit car haulers for sure. So let's find out the answer to that question if we can. All right, 
Let's get out of the zoom there. What else we got here? ELD citation cost. Okay, so, dang it. Really? ELD citation cost. Uh, long story short, I ordered an AOBRD from Gorilla Safety on December 1st. Never worked. Nobody there could figure it out. They won't issue me a refund. Horrible, horrible experience. Wow, that is bad. By the way, they are saying that even though I paid 260, they covered the two-year contract. I still owe around 700 since I didn't get it working by December 18th. They couldn't fix it either. So I'm. That's not me. I read that on Facebook. So sorry, Gorilla Safety. I mean, I, I really don't know. But um, I got the video road log, and I'll deal with Gorilla in the next week. Customer service, man, right? Man, you mess up the wrong customer and suddenly it's on Facebook and now it's on a live stream on YouTube. So go figure, that's the world we live in. VDO hasn't gotten me set up, ordered it on the 19th. So what I'm asking is how much am I gonna get fined if I go out next week without one working? Pretty good question. Um, I don't have the answer, I'm not out there. But I have read that, I mean, it's. I think it's in the hundreds of dollars. Because you can't say, well, I ordered it. Although, he, you can show a malfunctioning ELD, from what I've read. So, show them the gorilla. Show them that you tried to hook it up. And then have paper logs on hand, and I think you're good to go. But you only have eight days to, fi to get the malfunctioning ELD fixed. So, if you're outside the eight days, which, talking about the 18th, you might be, yeah. I think you're in, uh, I think you're in citation uh, the citation window now, which sucks, because ELD sucks. Runs from North Carolina to Georgia. I'm having the same problem with Gorilla. Oh, wow, that sucks. Well, Gorilla Safety is zero for two, and that's just in the past 30 minutes. Is that Gorilla Safety ELD? So here's a question, Dave. Why did you go with Gorilla Safety? Um... Not saying you shouldn't have, but what made you go with them? Because I, I don't know much about them. Uh, let's see here. Purchase your ELD. Let's do it. It's fantastic. I should try and call them. Oh, they got an 800 number. Um, I mean, this looks pretty good. It's in Houston. Um, let's see here. What's the oh pricing? Here we go. So you got Prime, Express, Extreme, three year, oh, $12 a month, okay. So the money, it's $12 a month. I mean, that sounds, you know, like a good deal, especially if, oh, and you get the ELD at no additional cost. So, all right, well, I mean, I, I could understand that. So does it not work or what? That sucks. AOBRD, not ELD. Okay, well, you can't get an AOBRD now. Although, I mean, he's talking by the 18th, and I'm guessing you are too. But in case you don't know, here's a newsflash. You can't get an AOBRD today. Um, from what I read, AOBRD ended December 18th. Now, if you already had an AOBRD installed, you can keep using it. But if it malfunctions, you have to throw it away and get an ELD. That is what I read uh, on the FMCSA information, and I've been in some ELD webinars, so I'm pretty sure that's true. They are going to call me in the morning to try and fix it. Okay. Well, you know what? There could be a legal issue. Um, yeah, you went with them before the 18th, but if it doesn't work now, I think legally you can't use it. I think that's part of what the mandate was all about, but... They'll know better than I, or at least you might want to check with the DOT or the FMCSA. I don't know. That sucks. That situation sucks. Um, so I'm sorry to hear that. but And that's why we're talking about it. Look at this community happening. That's pretty awesome. All right. Don't get, don't get so excited. It's ELDs we're talking about. North Carolina to Georgia, right? Let's do it, man. North Carolina to Georgia. So I guess because ELDs are in effect, we're going to see like some super incredible rates, right? I'm going to do five days. I'm going to do open to all. I'm going to do one hour or newer. You always, always, always want to do one hour or newer because the fresh fish is the good stuff. 
and let's do 40 cent minimum. I mean, I don't want to see anything below that. I don't need to be insulted so late in the day. Um, hey, man. Six vehicles? Oh, three cars? Oh, the motorcycle. Don't you hate that when it's a good load and you see a motorcycle and you're like, dude, that motorcycle is going to mess up my world. Um, wow. We just had a bunch of... Uh, that's why, uh, Jay, may I give Charles my info? May I give Charles my info? Yeah, you can give Charles your info. Who's Charles? I'm just kidding, but I'm not. Yeah, give Charles your info. And I appreciate you asking. That's cool, man. Who's Charles? Based on Keep Truck and Blog, the rule permits drivers to make annotations indicating the change, but the original recorded driving status is not erasable. Nice. Make annotations indicating the change, but the original record is not erasable. Right, right. So the editing is, I mean, it's obvious that it was edited. You can't erase the original information. And, um, I mean, they're probably going to scrutinize that, right? So it's essentially not very worthwhile to edit because then they're just going to look, then they're going to hone in on that. I can't buy one has been hooked up so I can use it. I can't buy one. It has been hooked up so I can use it. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. I keep being told to buy a pre-2000 and plan to keep it patched up and working like a B-52. Yeah, I've read that too. It seems like if any prices went up, it's the price of a pre-2000 uh, semi. Yeah, man. Totally. Screw e-logs, don't use them. <laughs> I was watching this video. This guy was physically upset that people were saying screw e-logs and stuff. And, uh, you know, Charles Dyer email. Oh, cool. Charles having trouble getting a car moved. Oh, okay. All right. What's he, what's he got? Charles is having trouble getting a car moved from, oh, from Minnesota? Hmm. Well, that could be the problem. That doesn't sound like a great place to pick up a car right now. I'm just saying. Um, but, you know, uh, have at it, man. If you can if you can find somebody. I guess it's based on the officer's, officer's discretion. That has got to be the number one problem. It's, I mean, you know, I mean. Ah, uh, crap. You know what? I just realized I've only got one minute left on my, e, on my ELD. I've got, I've got desk ELD. And, um, because, you know, I'm with the, uh, I'm with the, uh, working car hauler. Even I've got my desk ELD. I got one before everybody else, uh, because I'm pretty sure the whole world's going to be hooked up to ELD in the matter of a few years. You'll have secretary ELD and then you'll have, you know, apprentice ELD and, you know, well, the set Congress won't have ELDs for goodness sakes. No way. You know, we're going to mess with their free health care and, gyms and all that great stuff no way but everybody else yeah we're all gonna have elds um pre-2000 trucks or gliders skits with engines pre-2000 really any anything pre-2000 suddenly like atari is the is the best thing ever uh but dot are going to target pre-2000 trucks probably pull you over at every single way station yeah probably i know it's true oh see Well, see, I got on a roll, but you know what? I got to stay safe. Yeah, I can't get uh, can't get ahead of myself. Government knows best. Stupid egg timer. ELD break. I guess I just. I should when I'm taking my ELD break, I should I should surf dumb crap. Which I mean, what else can you do? Let's just go to CBS News. Hmm. I mean, I could be I could be working, you know. But I got to take a break. Catch up on stupid crap. Uh yeah, winter storm, I knew that. Bills fans donate. Trump tweets. <laughs> oh, and I'll never get back to work. That now. has prompted Delta, American, and Southwest. Oh. 
Where'd he come from? No. That was interesting. Swatting. That swatting story. Airlines crazy. to issue travel alerts to people flying in those areas. No. How much more time do I have on this stupid ELD break? It sucks. Oh man, video captures massive pileup on New York Highway. Yeah, well that's what we were watching. Don't ask for nude photos. Okay. Oh, the Logan Paul controversy. Yeah, that was weird. I don't like his videos anyways. Bus crash on Devil's Curve? Wow. Well, maybe they should rename it. Call it like, you know, Gabriel's Hideaway. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's a horrible story, too. Man, the local news sucks. This sucks. Man, I had to take an ELD break. I had to stop being productive to just read depressing news articles. Forget that. Maybe I should get back to tweeting nonsense. Okay. All right. Well, maybe I can get back to break here. Get back to work. By the way, super safe, super Kool-Aid. You know, if you hate ELD as much as I do, just start drinking the Kool-Aid. So, how about that Bitcoin? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I want to know more about Bitcoin. But it doesn't have any effect on my life. Um, so, uh, I don't know much about it. You know? I don't know. I, I also don't watch Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. It just doesn't apply to me. Um, what else have I got here? Oh, let's go back to Facebook News. Um... All right, so yeah, so that's the that was the uh, that was an interesting discussion actually. <laughs> LOL, Bitcoin, that is true. Okay. Okay. All right, so we got oh this sucks. How about some more sucky news? Stolen forty-eight foot Fontaine hybrid combination flatbed. Another. I mean, we just heard about a stolen truck. There were two stolen trucks in Florida last month. This is the guy's trailer. Stolen from Sadler's Truck Stop in Dunn, North Carolina, sometime between the 23rd and the 27th. So I guess he was parked for Christmas. What? How would that feel? God, that sucks. License number, trailer number, VIN number. It has Michelin tires, toolboxes on both sides. 11 strap winches on each side. Rub rail, cracked in four spots. Here's the phone number. So, you know, if you hear or see anything, man, that sucks, dude. God. Mm. I, uh, in November, I was at a hotel parking lot, rental car, back window, smashed in, broad daylight, all my luggage gone. It's amazing. When you have something stolen, God, it sucks. But here's some really, this is the worst news I heard. I just read this a few days ago. Um, from what I understand, it was told last night from Hanson out of, out of Hyundai, Montgomery, Alabama, we lost a fellow car hauler. He passed away early Saturday morning. It wasn't a Hanson driver, but he fell Friday from the top trailer deck down in the belly and suffered multiple head injuries. That is all I know as of now, except... That one flipper was flipped in on number three up top. The other wasn't noticed. He was supposedly found when the other driver from the same company noticed he hadn't seen him in a while. His prayers go out. Well, we, we do now know who this was. Um, Pierre Encarnacion. I think I, I hopefully I said that close to right. So that's him. And, I mean, you know, this is a tough job. And... Right? Can you, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a horrendous injury. Um, so you can go to his GoFundMe page and, uh, it's here. Okay. GoFundMe.com. And then there's the forward slash and, you know, whatever you can give, whatever you can do. Obviously they met their goal, which is great. Even if you just send out good vibes and, um. You know, I mean, that is just, 
that's brutal. Um, I, I don't I don't really know what else to say, but I knew I had to mention it because it's just that's a tough story. That's a really tough story because that is real news. And so I guess that made me want to end with this. I saw this on Facebook. I thought this was good. You know, simple formula for living: live beneath your means, return everything you borrow, stop blaming other people, admit it when you make a mistake. Give clothes, not worn a charity. Do something nice try and try not to get caught. Do something nice and try not to get caught. That's awesome. Listen more. Talk less, Jay. Every day, take a 30-minute walk. Strive for excellence, not perfection. Be on time. Don't make excuses. Don't argue. Get organized. Be kind to unkind people. That one's tough. Let someone cut ahead of you in line. That one I'm able to do. Um, take time to be alone, cultivate good manners, be humble, realize and accept that life isn't fair, know when to keep your mouth shut. As I've gotten older, I try that one more and more. Go an entire day without criticizing anyone, learn from the past, plan for the future, live in the present, don't sweat the small stuff because it's all small stuff. That is pretty awesome. So... Uh, okay, man, that is Facebook news, and um, let's check those rates. Let's go ahead and refresh, and let's see that dollar a mile ELD stuff. Ooh, Chevy Corvette paying buck sixty-seven a mile. Oh, it has a loose motor, must secure. Oh wow, what's that gonna be like? Anybody? Anybody want to move a nineteen fifty-nine Chevy Corvette with a loose motor? Love to hear your comments. I'm not blaming the broker, but I'm saying, I mean, that sounds like a pretty tough load. So, and that's interesting. It's going to Savannah. Are they going to fix that? Well, no, they're probably just going to ship it with the loose motor, right? Fix it overseas. Uh, let's see here. I know, I know. It's tough, man. Why? That's why you don't leave a trailer unhook at a truck stop. Yeah. Unfortunately... But, I mean, you know, you have to find somewhere to park so you can go about your life. And it's going to, I mean, it's, you know, it's spinning the roulette wheel. It's going to happen to somebody, probably several people. Um, yeah, right. ELD really helps in rushing around, right? It's dangerous, especially when the weather is bad. But you got your, you know, you got your freaking egg timer, man. Uh, I do it all the time. Number one, non-combat fatality in the army typically involves heavy vehicles. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Um, that's why we all make so much money. Well, I know. I'm just a dispatcher. I should get paid a little. Just, you know, just keep me barely hanging on. I'm kidding. Um, but... So I made a video about this. I'm still wor I'm still editing it, but I booked a car, and the broker left it posted on Central, and I wanted him to take it take it off Central so that I know I've got it. Guess what happened? Get a call from the driver. Hey, I'm here. I'm at Copart. I'm trying to pick up that car. They say it's not here. Guess why? Because the broker knew he left it on Central, knowing that he just was, shoot, man. Yeah, calling about a load on Central? Sure, I'm not going to tell you that I already dispatched it or told another guy. The guy sent me lot number, buyer number, address, everything. But he dispatched it to somebody else. Do you know why? I know why. Because he needed to hedge his bets that he wouldn't go into another day of $40 storage. But I already checked the storage. I knew we were going to pick it up. I told him we were going to pick it up. But maybe he's been burned in the past. So, I mean, I don't want to burn him at the stake or anything crazy, but it really sucked. And the driver wants a cancellation fee. Well, I, you know, I can't, uh, I can't make that happen. So it just sucks. All right, I'm looking at cars, just griping away. That egg timer is not providing safety for the driver. No, it's not. That's what makes it so appropriate. This is literally. The same thing as the real ELD. That's why I, I, I wrote on it ELD. Right? I slapped a sticker on there. Because it's worth the same. It's the same thing. Literally the same thing. It's just a damn timer. It doesn't. It can't stop me. It can't wake me up. It can't. 
do any of the things that are actually promised in the Senate chambers of the lawmakers that are really saying they're doing something. No, it's not. Not at all. Which is, oh, I like that. Except at 43 cents a mile, two cars and a van. What's the van? A Dodge Grand Caravan? You're not going to get rich off it, though. That There's no ELD money happening here. Um, dang it, what was I saying? Something about ELD. There's a lot of stuff going to Savannah. I don't know if this is helping you. Charlotte to Savannah. I guess, I guess when you search North Carolina, Georgia, think about going to Savannah. But I'll tell you what, the backhaul is not that great. Um, Echo RU Shore Point. Hope I didn't miss much. Hey, what's up, Patrick? You always come in late. <laughs> Which is, that's cool. Because if you start coming in early, it's going to, I'm going to, you know, I might get concerned. Other than burning yourself for future work from said broker. Yeah, exactly. I'm the one that'll pay, right? Nah, I'm telling you, this guy was, I'm not, I don't worry about it. I don't care about this guy. It's, it's worth it. No, but I'm not telling you his name. That's the thing. I've got some scruples. Of, maybe at least one of us has scruples in the relationship. I'm not going to tell you the broker's name. I'm not going to tell you the car. I'm not going to give you his phone number or the company. So, well, I, I think I did mention the car. Ah, dang it. Better look at that uh, resolutions list. Start, start repenting. But yeah, man, North Carolina to Savannah is the way. So then what happens is, if that's good, we're going to call Ziggy here in a couple minutes. Um, where's that, by the way, Central Dispatch? Now that uh, you've got, um, how much money are you getting from us now? I had, uh, I, <laughs> I, had um, I had one of my drivers send me a copy of his receipt. Yep, he paid $115.95 a month. Uh, 115.95 a month for a phone book list of cars. Amazing. Where's my backhaul button, Central Dispatch? Oh no, you're never gonna do that. Okay, cool. Uh, so I guess I'll manually do it. Okay, Savannah. I know nobody at Central Dispatch is ever gonna watch this show, and nobody cares. I got it. I got it. Uh, let's go. Okay, so here's what we're doing. Let's suppose we go to Savannah. What's it like coming back? I, I, I got a dollar. It sucks. A dollar says it sucks. All right. Let's, let's check that. Okay, we have 11 spread across the entire state of North Carolina. So that sucks. Um, all right. Hey, that's pretty cool. United Road. Load of nine. Oh, oh, they're all full loads. Oh, so that does, that really sucks. Because my guess is you're probably either not a stinger or, uh, well, in which case now it doesn't matter, or you already knew this and this is a regular run. So if you are eating off the load board uh, and you... Boy, if you don't have a relationship with United Road, you can just forget it. You are not getting back to North Carolina and making any money. So, that sucks. So what I would do as your dispatcher is I'd say, hey, let's see if we can go somewhere else and then come back to North Carolina. Let's do a triangle. Or let's go beyond North Carolina or something like that. Let's get creative. How's that, Pete? Buffalo's getting bombed with snow. Really? Oh, man. Yeah, we're, we're watching the... Patrick, we were watching the video earlier of all the, uh, of all the, um, the cars in the, uh, the wreck, the pileup. It's like 75 car pileup. All right, let's call Ziggy. Let's see what's going on. I know he's up there too. Okay. What are we a minute late? Typical. Oh, is the ELD break. Hey, Ziggy, it's Jay. 
Hey, how you doing tonight, Jack? Hey, man, good. Thanks for taking the time to join me on my auto transport intel stream so here's the deal i was telling this earlier so so we're live right now i got 20 people watching just it's pretty cool that's pretty average for me and uh we got the chat line people are talking and i got you on the phone because the question is what did you do today what's happening with iata um iata we call it iata it's an alliance of independent auto transporters. It's set up to try to bring people together to take advantage of all these shortcomings we're all having because none of us are big enough to qualify for discounts from anybody. Um, small one and two truck companies uh, were pretty much the pawns. And until we start bringing the industry together, yeah, I mean, we're all out here trying to grab the table scraps for some of us, and we're literally killing ourselves. So this is a way to bring a bunch of people together to say, hey, we're actually more than just one little mom or pop company with the skill set these drivers have and the investment the owners have. It's time to bring something bigger to the table. You know, it's cool because, I mean, what you said, I, I, I identify with, the owner-operators I work with identify with, um, the number one load board that I go to every day absolutely makes me feel smaller and smaller by the minute. I assume that would be central. Oh, so you're familiar with the behemoth. Well, you got to remember, central is owned by the largest mover of cars in the secondary market, which is Cox Automotive. Um, I, why do they own it? There's a lot of speculation on that, but they purchased it when they bought dealer track a couple of years ago. Um, they move more cars than anybody. They're a for-profit business. They make more money the less they pay. I do a lot of work for one of their sisters in the business, and I just have to demand my rates. It's not the brokers that are killing the rates. It's the guys accepting the freight too cheaply. Well, it's interesting you say that. And uh, it, all, it, it always comes back to that. But the independent guys feel like they're between a rock and a hard place, right? I mean, and I so... opinion, but sure. Well, the thing is that... Listen, I'm a seasoned dispatcher, okay? I'm will, I, I'll go ahead and say that. It's one of the few things I can actually say. That's true. Right. And I, sp I spend the time on the phone with brokers, and I, I, I fight for that extra $25 when I have to. And, and they still, you know, they're like, well, whatever, Jay. I'm just going to wait for the next guy. You know? What, what they're doing is they're playing a game of chess. Because if you talk to, if you want to get into research, um, the NADA says the average vehicle loses between $8 and $12 per day in value. Okay, so you're losing equity every single day. If they want a car to sit for three or four days and potentially lose between 24 and $36 over three days, then God bless them over that $25 bill. But they know that we're all starving in certain ways. If we don't put an end to it, we're going to starve ourselves right out of business. So do you have, I mean... I, I'm not going to argue with what you say. I just, I want to know, how do we fix it? Do you have ideas of how, what, what we do? What the plan of IATA is, is to start educating even the operators and the owners that there's a certain cost per mile that if you don't achieve, you're actually paying people to move their freight. And people don't realize when you figure out your true cost per mile, People think because they have a truck paid for, they don't have a truck expense. Well, of course you do. You have maintenance. You have repairs. That asset costs you something at one point. And as it's dwindling away because you can't necessarily afford a new piece, um, there's a reason behind it. Until you can simply calculate what it's costing you to run per mile, you really don't know where to price your services. Great, man. So, all right. So, we're talking about you can help 
you can help owner operators get a better handle of their operating expense. You can help owner operators get better deals on things they need to purchase. Am I right? Yes, we've we've negotiated deals already with Continental for Continental Fires. Um, our annual membership fee for a company is three ninety nine ninety five. Um, you buy three tires on our Continental pricing, you save enough to pay that back. And if you're driving a Stinger truck, you're generally buying between 10 and 12 tires per year. So after the first three paying your membership fee back, you're putting more cash in your pocket. On top of that, buying supplies, um, a discount for Verizon cell phone. It's something we all use, Verizon or AT&T, the majority. Um, because we got the Verizon deal, AT&T is talking about me matching the deal. And it goes on and on to several different vendors we're talking to for consumable products and what have you. Yeah, that's pretty solid. I mean, I know that uh, even as a dispatcher, I'll, I've talked to just even four car haulers that one four car hauler, he would go through tires all the time. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it sounds to me like with just a few benefits like that, it'll pay for itself, not to mention all the other benefits. So how would, how, how does a, how does a new member uh, take advantage of, you know, the different sections of the membership's benefits? Like, do you have a town hall to talk about things or news? There is a form within the members only portion of it. Okay. And we've had to keep it locked down because we don't want the drama of Facebook. We want people that are serious about seeing a change. The industry being as splintered and fragmented as it is, it doesn't allow us to have a serious conversation without people that are so distraught from what's going on. They want to be very aggressive with their input of negativity. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it to people that are serious. We're going to allow you to network with other people that are more successful than yourself or may know something different than you. We all learn from each other. I learn every single day from one and two truck companies, and I happen to have eight. Yeah, I, well, actually, me too. It's a, I work with almost all all single owner operators with five capacity or less and i've learned so much over the years that's actually why i do the show if it wasn't for all that you know if i was were if i was just another dispatcher at like a a major or medium sized fleet i probably wouldn't have had all the experiences that i've had in learning how difficult it is out there for car haulers it's just i mean it's great so i mean i i think that I've, I've I've already seen on Facebook plenty of positive feedback. Were you telling me you've had some negative pushback? Of course, there's negative pushback by the brokers. Um, anybody that's in my Facebook group, Auto Transport, any everything, um, they saw we had a broker come on and actually start throwing stones and calling us all scum. Um, that's really not a way to do business with the people that provide you with the majority of your revenue. Um, we're, we're so fragmented and splintered, they don't want us speaking to each other because if you move a car, if they have a regular run, call it from L.A. to Michigan, and it pays 900 a car to you, and they've got me doing it for 600 a car, they don't want us talking because when I see that you're getting 900, okay, then why don't I get that 900? They don't want us right. cutting into their profit margins so they want to keep us as far apart as they can. And your and your proof so, of that your proof of that is they've already got us to where we can't even talk to the customer about certain things, right? Well, so, that's that's what they're asking, but um, I move a tremendous amount of vehicles where I have to pick up at repossession yards, I have to pick up some POVs. Right. And if I can't call and verify, I'm not going. Totally. If I can't call and set an appointment, I'm not going. Anybody know a company that pretty much on every on every dispatch you can't call the customer? I can think of at least one company that does that. 
and it's so frustrating. It's so irritating. So, I mean, my, my simple question is if we continue to service them on their terms, that's the tail wagging the dog. And if we allow the tail to wag the dog, honestly, just park your truck and forget about it. It's not worth continuing. You're the one with the investment. You're the one that has your butt on the line every day by riding down the highway with all the liability of the four-wheelers pulling out in front of you, stopping, cutting you off, doing all these things. They don't have that risk. They don't have the liability. Don't let the tail wag the dog. Yeah, man. That's a, it's, it's great, man. So... So what led you to this point? I mean, how did you decide? You know, I'm here. I'm doing this. I'm I'm putting it out there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna help. Well, what happened was I started ATE because I belong to several different groups on Facebook, um, on another website, the Trucker Report, and everybody's always saying, "How do I find service for my tractor trailer?" Being a car hauler. They say, how do I get in and out of a hotel where I can fit my stuff? How do I find a car puller at an auction so I'm not spending eight hours of my 14 hours of work that day pulling cars? The same simple issues every single day that are plaguing the industry, It's everybody has the answers. I might have the answers in Bordentown. Somebody else has it in Las Vegas. Somebody else has it in Michigan. So we simply built the website just to categorize things and make it easy, we started a Facebook group to make people aware of the website. Right. After that went on for a while, people said, well, we need more. So when people said they wanted more, I talked to probably 50 different people about starting a trade organization. <laughs> and after a year and a half, we finally are ready to make everybody aware of what we've done. And every single person we've talked to Every single person, except for the big brokers or people that don't want us communicating, think that our industry is kind of left out in the woods without any help. So we've had people from all aspects embrace it. I can't tell you all our secrets yet because it's still in process. But we, we literally have the second largest Peterbilt dealer in the country, Larson Trucks provides worldwide equipment with their chassis. They believe so strongly in it and with our relationship with Worldwide and everything they've done, they've agreed that the IOTO members are going to get a coupon for a pretty substantial amount off of a truck as far as I'm concerned. It's more than hundreds, but it's not a whole lot more, but you understand what I mean. Well, um, it's interesting. I was looking at some of the chat here. So the website is iata.biz, right? That is correct. And then the one you were talking about before that is autotransporteverything.com, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. And then you've got, what's the name of the Facebook group? Is Auto Transport Everything? That is correct. Okay. All right. So are those kind of the three sites that are forums for people to go to and participate in what you're talking about? Yeah, autotransporteverything.com is a standalone from IATA. IATA has several members. When you log into IATA and you go to look around to see who we are and what we are, you can see who all the founders are. Auto Transport Everything was just something to kind of help out a little bit. And when... I, I, almost feel like a drug dealer. We gave everybody a little taste of what we do if we kind of work together. Um, they started asking for more. So several of the owners or management of pretty decent companies and highly respected companies said, let's just try. Because if we don't try, we're, all we're going to do is sit here and cry about it. There's no reason to talk about it anymore. Yeah. So IATA was put together because of Everybody believes we can take control of the industry, educate the truck owners, educate the people we pick up cars from, even educate the DOT mm. of how people are side streaming and acting inappropriately in our industry. Our industry is highly specialized, and if you want to put one chain on the front car, one chain on the back car, and think that secures your load, you're going to kill a family of 12 someday, and that's prison time. Wow. If you want to be paid specialized rate, you better act it. Um, you 
you just may think there is an Indiana State Patrol trooper, highway patrol. His name is Brent Hoover, and he's been doing Facebook Live uh, sessions. And, uh, man, that would be great to get a member of the DOT in the fold. If you've already got one, that's awesome. I'd like to get one on this show. I, I would love to talk to him because, I mean, I have trucks that are brand new. I had a truck with 1,700 miles that literally was driven from Cottrell up to New York City. On the GW bridge, they were pulled over for an inspection right before the bridge. They literally found one of the brake lines leaning against something that literally, if you took your nail and put it into your skin, it would leave a small little mark. Mm -hmm. They found a brand new $300,000 asset for that. Wow. Yet you have people going through there with cars not secured. You have people going through there with no true insurance, no operating authority, no DOT numbers. I mean, educate them to where the real problems are so we can kind of weed out the dirt from the industry. It, it is amazing <laughs> um, that, you know, it's kind of like, you could have the same quality, but you have a, a, a team of drivers, and they can get it around ELD with no problem. And they're not, well, these, they're not the safe yeah, I mean, ones. Is it going to kill the industry? I don't think so. It's not going to. I think, it, I think it will get rid of a lot of the problem people that just refuse to operate within it. Um, I don't want to get into this argument because... <laughs> It's, it, it's a two-sided coin that nobody's going to be happy with both sides. It totally. ELD sucks either way. It does. It, it does. It does. Yeah, nobody, wants, nobody wants to be a grown man that pays his bills and be told by mommy to go to bed at 9 o'clock. <laughs> wow. How, how did you know me so well? Well, it's... it's. I, I don't want to sit here and beat the dead horse, honestly. <laughs> it, it's I just, know. It's, not what anybody wants. No, but, I know. You know, you have, you have to learn to work within it as best you can. Well, that's why, frankly, I'm still in... I'm, I'm trying to help with the education of ELDs because there are so many problems. Um, it's easy to take a shot at it, and I know that uh, ultimately it can, it can do some good, <laughs> but there is so much confusion as to, you know, which device works best, what's the best deal... Um, I try to focus on that. I try not to focus on how awful it is. Although I still, you know, I'm having fun with it because I can. And in, and in a few months, it won't be this much fun. There's a gentleman named Brian Riker who's going to be working with IATA. He owns a company called Fleet Compliance Solutions. Okay. He is, he is absolutely a wizard with compliance things, DOT, specs, and laws, and all of that involved. Okay. He's somebody that would probably, I mean, he, he's so highly educated, he's kind of dry to talk to in certain ways. Great. Great guy, and I don't mind saying it, where he can hear it. I've told him myself. But the guy is such a wizard, and if he doesn't know, he finds out. He doesn't give you information off the back of his seat. He literally, just like me, when I quote something in AT, I always try to provide when the argument started, try to provide the statute, the code, the actual law for people to read. So it's no longer Ziggy's opinion. It's, this is what the government says. This is what the laws we have to follow. Here's the code. So I found you know, fleetcompliancesolutions.net, right? I saw the link on I IATA. There he is, Brian yep. J. Riker. I would, yep, I would is, love to talk to him. Man, I would love to talk to him. If you can make an introduction for me, that'd be amazing, and I can also introduce myself. But, man, that'd be fantastic. Absolutely. Oh, great. Okay, he, cool. He, he actually um, sells, what is the name of his? What does he sell? Uh, what is the name of his? Well, his, his services include okay. USDOT compliance, authority, compliance review, transportation management outsourcing, safety training, OSHA, CDL, test prep. Those are some of the There's services. At one point, Jay, we want to get to we want to get to a point someday where maybe even Brian's company will vet members that want to be vetted so we can go to one of the insurance companies and say, hey, 
We've got 500 members. Yeah. You tell me how you want them vetted. Hire Brian's company to vet them. Now we all, might all qualify for a preferred insurance rate. That's pretty cool. That's a great idea. Until you get the masses together, though, you're still only 10, 20, 30, 50 trucks. Right. Um, we, we launched it two minutes after midnight, which my wife wants to kill me for because <laughs> I your kiss goodbye. Uh. <laughs> I went back. Yeah. Well, we, we literally had to print out 80 membership cards just from launching two days ago. That's awesome. And pe people are begging for what we're doing, but until they participate, it's not going to help. Unless people participate, it's five guys or ten guys or twenty guys' opinions. Let's get a hundred people, and you know what? You're not always going to win the argument. But if there's 87 people that say it should be this way, two that say it should be this, if you're one of those two, you might get your butt hurt, but maybe they know something you don't. And, yeah, I mean, it's just going to, we kind of try to make sense of this chaos. It's great, man. Well, let me know how I can help. I'm glad that you and I are in contact. And um, it's just great. I know that this is exactly the kind of stuff the community and the industry needs so we need to communicate that's the biggest part of it communicating will help us all come to a different understanding yeah agreed and it's it's about time i mean maybe maybe just in time my goodness just getting clobbered from every direction so thirty-eight thousand companies in this industry according to the fmcsa there's one trade organization besides what we are starting now that I'm aware of that is specific to car haulers. And it, it just, it doesn't seem like there's enough push. Everybody needs to get involved or it's not going to happen. So check this yeah, out. It's easy to sit here and cry, but hey. Hey, this is cool. So in the chat line, Stan at Car Shipio, which is car hauling software, TMS, he also has a... Uh, he has a growing load board. He says that he would like to collaborate and offer discounts to members of IATA. Well, definitely. He can contact me on Facebook or any other way. If you want to give him my cell phone number, feel free. Cool. Uh, please don't please don't put it over the Internet because I don't need... I won't. I won't. Seven, 700 uh, young girls calling me at 3 a.m. Right. for a date. You know? See, you know, you just can't get a break. Um, hey, you know. <laughs> Stan, if you want to email me, and I will get you uh, Ziggy's information, and that goes for anybody watching the show, if you have more questions for Ziggy or for me, if I can help you uh, get in touch with IATA or learn more about it, please send me an email. And um, Ziggy, I want to thank you for taking the time to join the show, um, and uh, let me know what I can do for you in the coming days. Whatever it is, however I can help, I want to help. Sam here, I appreciate everything you're trying to do out there. I think we're uh, all on the same lines, but getting us together in a united front is what's going to help, and I'd really like to see that happen. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, I uh, you reached out to me, I think that was right after Thanksgiving. So um, things are happening fast. So um, it's amazing. It's really cool. So good timing. I mean, I'm really... I'm really happy that, you know, this, this show is only six months old, and I've only been doing the live show for three months. I mean, so it's all relatively new, and I feel like I got in at the right time. So this is great. I'm so glad that, I'm so glad we're having this conversation right now. It took us a year and a half to get IATA to where it is. Wow. Um, there, there's a lot more behind it. I mean, yes, everybody likes to mess with me on auto transport everything because I try to keep it somewhat reasonable in there. But this is this is not just my opinion. This is several very, very successful people in the industry have joined together. So it's not just one opinion. It's collaborate, work together, see what we can do, and go from there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's a good time to be a new car hauler. I mean, maybe. <laughs> but at least there's better information now than there was. As a group, as a group. So, all right, man, you take care. I will be in touch with you. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. All right, you too, man. All right, bye-bye. Peace. 
All right, cool, man. That is so cool. And um, I want to thank you, Ty, for helping me make sure that we got that together. Um, talking to you is what spurred me to talk to Ziggy. I just talked to him, man, the last couple hours. Came on the show. Great information. And he just launched this. This is only a couple days old, I think, at this point. So, well, like you said, it was midnight. Maybe that would... Did he do that New Year's Eve? Or was it the day before or the day after? Anyways. Um, so, yeah, I'm still learning about it. You can contact Ziggy Direct. I don't know if he put his email address up here or not. But you can go to iota.biz and... Um, you can, let's see, you click join us, okay, and then there's, what do you do here? Let's see, you click join us, okay, and I guess, there you go, you can add it to cart if you know you want to get in, but I suppose if you have a question and you're not ready to pay and join, send me an email and I'll put you in touch with Ziggy, so let's do it that way. Um, and I'm up against the real ELD break here, which is I'm at an hour and a quarter. I try to end this show at about 75 minutes in running time, which, uh, which we're at. So I don't know if I should play the, I could play the car hauling game. Um, but I don't know if I'm in the mood. I don't know. Does anybody want to want me to play this car hauling game? I, I like this game. Well, it's, it's not just car hauling, it's trucking in general. Let's see here. Oh, uh, see, I'm not... You know what? I didn't connect. I didn't connect to the MOBA Zen, so I'm not connected. So we're going to skip that. I went through the Facebook news. I think I'm really at the end of, uh, at the end of my information here. Um, I don't think I achieved much, much success on the route I was searching other than... Well, here's a new car. Oh, it's United Road again. So if you run North Car if you run North Carolina to Savannah, you better have a relationship with United Road if you want to get back out. And it looks like it's mostly full loads, but they probably toss up some onesies, twosies. It looks like everything's headed back to Charlotte though. Uh, there's some Greensboro, Raleigh. Oh yeah, they got that on lockdown. I wonder, I wonder who that relationship is with. Um, I would suggest call Connie. Connie's cool, man. Connie, there's her number. And give her a call, send her a text. And if she can get you set up with one of those single loads, she definitely will. But as far as getting to Savannah, ah, that's no problem, man. This car's all over the place. You know, and you'll notice, it seems like there's always several dozen that, and you'll see the same ones over and over, several dozen that'll do the, uh, the salvage units going to the ports so hopefully that helps well guys i am at the end of the show uh oh there's my live subscriber count oh wait a minute did it change oh there we go uh, i want to thank everybody for tuning in for the show to the show and kind of listen to me ramble and go through the community information and the facebook news it's all about car hauling and um Right now, I don't think there's a I don't think there's a news late night show for car hauling. So I went ahead and threw my hat in the ring. I'm filling that space. Um, if it existed, if there's a need, I don't know. But it seems like we get a pretty good regular stream of viewers in the live stream and then on demand. And um, really, since I've been doing the live show, the numbers have gone up for this channel, which is really cool. And I'm looking forward to my next milestone of 1,000 subscribers. I hope to hit that before the next show. Get the super chat. Get the sponsorship opportunities. Because as we can see, I mean, this community is growing. This is a great time for the car hauling community. Maybe 2018 will be a banner year uh, in the car hauling community space. I know there's a lot of freight truckers that are YouTubers and have different methods of communicating with each other. But it seems in car hauling, and this is for you, Hotshot Dave, man, you came at a good time. Make a strong channel and join me in putting out uh, not only information, but um, when, in, when it's relevant, entertainment. And uh, maybe we can help IATA and other Facebook groups 
just solidify the the feeling that car haulers, the owner operators, are taking some of this power back instead of just being subjected to you know the whims of a thirty cent a mile. Uh, man, I don't I don't even know what adjectives to pick next because I don't I don't like any of that stuff. So uh, this is the end of the show. Oh, I want to thank um. I got this image from Rob Sund. Here, let's go ahead and minimize that. Oh, that's pretty wild. Uh, that is Rob Sund's. I think that's his rig. I found that on one of the Facebook groups. And um, with the snow and the lights, and uh, it's pretty cool. Very, very cool. So I want to thank Rob for letting me uh, put up that, that image on my show tonight. So let's go ahead and crank up the car hauler. And this is when the show ends, and the music kicks back in, and we hit the road. So I will see you guys next week on Auto Transport Intel, Car Hauling Dispatcher, Tuesday Nights Live. I'm Jay. You guys take care. I will see you on the next run on Tuesday night. Thanks.